Hi again. Welcome. Welcome to the Spirit of Watercolor as we continue our journey together with this most spiritual medium, watercolor, right? Linda back again. And um, we're starting our three part series about the paint and the mixing of paint and watercolor paints. And mm, I want to help you to get a really good start and a real positive uh, beginning to your watercolor journey. And uh, the better the supplies you have, as I've said before, the better your, your watercolor paintings will come out and the more confidence you will have and the more joy and pleasure and spiritual uh, experience of this medium, right? Okay, so let's look at our watercolor uh, paints. I have my famous old and too heavy uh, art bin. This is, you know, your classic. It says art bin case. I can't even close it right now. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, mainly, though, is the paint. So, you know, you open this up and, you know, you can see all the watercolor paints I have and supplies on the bottom, which really do fit actually there. And um, I keep them in a chronological order of color so I can find things easier, keep things organized in there. But let's talk firstly about the paint. Um, what kind of paint should you get, right? Well, we know we want watercolor, but there's two kinds, right? There's the transparent watercolors that are called watercolor, and then there's gouache, which is uh, an opaque watercolor medium. It's very beautiful too. It just doesn't have that luminous, transparent to the white of the paper um, potential that these watercolors do. Okay, you probably heard brand-wise of Windsor and Newton, and you've probably heard of um, Cotman, which is a Windsor and Newton brand. Then there's also Brumbacher, some of the oldies but goodies. Um, I do think Windsor and Newton is a wonderful, wonderful watercolor paint. I have some of those in my in my um, paints. I don't use a lot of them as I used to, as much as I used to. I'm trying to find one for you here. There's one. A beautiful violet wizard. I don't know why this tube is silver, but it's a most professional grade. It's more concentrated than your cotton, which is also Windsor Newton, but that's a student grade. I recommend for the best start, you know, the, over the years I've learned that you know, when I started with the student grade paints, they just didn't have that glorious, rich, deep potential of color. Watercolors aren't meant to just be, um, how do I say, soft and pastel, but they, they can be as intense, rich, and glorious as you would like, all the way to the pastel and to the white, if you wish. We have a huge amount of value potential with watercolors. Okay. Now, another brand that I recommend and I use is Daniel Smith. It's been around for a long time now. You can look it up. There's, they have their own website. They used to be a whole art supply company, but then they um, realized their paints are so amazing and wonderful and people mainly just were ordering those, I think. I can't quote that for sure, but that's my guess. Um, they just now are selling their paints. And they come in five milliliter tubes and 15 milliliter tubes and they're quite large and you get a pretty good value per, per money if you get the large 15 millimeter tubes. Glorious professional colors. They have something like 280 colors. You don't need all those colors, especially to start with. It can be overwhelming, but my suggestion would be to get a yellow or two, a red or two, and a blue or two, maybe a couple earth colors such as um, a lot of people like uh, raw umber, which is a brown, or uh, raw sienna. Um, there's another one that's even, I think that might be the lighter one, the raw sienna. Um, I've got many other colors that are very similar to that in my palette over the years, but you know, a lot of people just like those basic um, earthy tones you can find. The, oh, and uh, yellow ochre is kind of a muted, kind of an earthy yellow, and it's kind of nice too. So. Those are things you can start with. If you want a black, you can get a black. I only really use a particular black on a key. Well, actually I do use it quite a lot. It's 
it's a different kind of a black. It's called neutral tint, and it's more of a warm, browny black, and it's very, very sedimentary. You get a lot of granulation and uh, textural effects. But the black black that I use, and what we'll talk about in a further video upcoming, would be how to mix the best blacks. Blacks that are not just flat, you know, I don't want to say boring black. There's blacks that are much more interesting that you can create on your own. You could just call them darks. They may not completely look like a black. Or they can be like, they mix and they become a black and then parts of them you can see other little colors in them which makes it a little more atmospheric. You know, things just don't, in, in reality, in the world that we look at, things aren't just black and white all the time, right? <laughs> so. And so there's a lot of ways to go, and we'll, we'll get into that later, but for now we're talking about paint. I've also used a brand called Holbein, which is nice, but they, I love them, they're beautiful. And I have a tube somewhere, but they just, they're just so tiny, and I don't think they come in larger tubes, they're kind of like this size. This one's actually a Daniel's one, but um, theirs tend to be really small. In fact, they might be smaller than the five milliliter, but I, they're so concentrated though that they're, they're lovely. Holbein, H-O-L-B-E-I-N. That's a nice brand as well. As you can see, I'm recommending tubes, not pans. You can get these in pans also. My opinion though is that you get your best um, draw from your brush to the pockets of the palette and you can draw the most paint out. This is not my most, this palette is. I'm just experimenting with colors on that palette. The actual first used palette, again, the Dan Pike I know used to talk about, you know, I, I try to keep that palette really loaded, okay? And then you can really gather a lot of paint out onto the nice big palette there. And uh, we want to make sure that we get a lot of paint on there and then we get a lot of paint loaded into our brush so that when you can paint and paint and there's still paint coming out. It isn't like when you have a tiny little brush and you're going in there and you, you know, you keep running out and you keep dipping and you can't, you know, and then it just isn't work as well. We want a lot of paint flowing and get a fresh look, put that on there and it's on the paper. So there you go. Okay, so that's to talk about paints. You can try other ones, look up other ones. My, my new favorite, oh, it's not new, I had some tubes of it, is Sennelier, which is a French one that the Fresh Impressionists used. I have a whole box, new box of those that I want to start to use. I've used a few of their colors. It's got some honey in the um, binder. These paints have a binder that keeps the paint together when you wet it, and it, otherwise the pigment would just break apart. So you have this liquid binder. Gum Arabic is the most common. I believe that's in the sommelier, but then they've also added some honey, which adds a little more sheen, and it keeps the paints, I want to say, more um, easier to wet, and they're more flowing, and so um, they have some positives to them that I actually don't really have an issue. I think Daniel Smith is every bit as good. In fact, it's still my favorite, but um, as a you know, sometimes just to keep myself interested and keep uh, expanding. I like to try a different uh, brand of paint once in a while and see what they have to offer. The colors will vary from brand to brand and the colors, they may have different colors. Okay, so so a cadmium red in Daniel Smith may look a little different than a cadmium in Windsor and Newton is what I mean, but also they may have different color um, choices that some that Daniel Smith may have that other because they have toner they have more than anything. There are colors in here that other brands don't even have. The one thing I must say though is that the Daniel Smith paints, um, there's some that I use in place of your most naturally, most regularly bought colors such as, like I said, the red, yellows, and blues. You know, I just, instead of using Maybe Hansa yellow, which is really popular. I like nickel azo yellow. Um, some people like cadmium yellow. I like, you know, these you know, different, different ones that they have that are similar, but I like them a little better just for my own reasons. Maybe they're more transparent or they're a little different. In, um, maybe there's a little more, like in nickel azo yellow, there's a little more yellow green tint. It has a hint of green to it. Uh, but it's still gold and it's an unusual color, so I love that. So I had to start using that and stopped using the cadmium so much. And you know, that's just personal preference. There's a lot of choice in, in 
your paints too. Okay. Anyway, this is what I wanted to talk about in the first video, is just choosing your paints. In our next video, we want to talk about mixing them. And there's different ways to mix them. I'm really excited about that video, and I really hope you'll see them. This is just a quickie, just to talk about, you know, acquiring paints. Again, you don't need all of this. I've just, over years, I'm a color crazed person with watercolors, so I've acquired a lot over the years. Um, I still have my favorites. The main ones on my palette tend to be the main ones. I might, on the side of a, okay, so I always put, you know, my favorite colors, lemon yellow, nicolazzo, green gold. You know, all the way around, these are the ones I always use, but maybe a, next to that one over there, there's my greens. I might put a new green down right in front of the other ones. There's no room on this palette. Or I could use another palette. But, you know, just so I, I can try something different on there, just to get a little different for the paints, you know? Okay, so um, hopefully this video is helpful, and I, I hope you can go out and explore or go on the catalogs. You know, there's many art catalogs online. You can try and look and um, talk to the people. Call them up. Um, they'll, the customer service people are fantastic at like Cheap Joe's or Dick Lick, Blick, I think they call it Blick Art Materials now. I've been around so long, I changed the names of some of the places a little bit. Um, and you can find um, people who will help you to kind of choose maybe a good um, colors to start with. You can start with three, four, two, just get the good ones, okay? Because I think you'll see much more success. You'll be much more excited to kind of want to move on, to keep going, to keep growing with this watercolor movement, which is such a beautiful and spiritual one. Like I say, it's from the pigments of the earth, all nature, water, you know, all the things in nature that we're pulling together to make our own creation so we connect with nature and are part of it and is so enriching to our lives. So keep coming back. This keeps us positive. It keeps us from uh, feeling alone and isolated. We can connect together and work together and uh, make a more beautiful world. Thank you so much for joining me. Please click the like button if you uh, enjoyed this video and um, subscribe if you haven't because I, I would really like to get this uh, YouTube uh, kicking off and um, really start to uh, help people because our world is it has a lot of struggles going on in it and what we need to do is balance our lives and make sure we're doing very positive, wonderful things in it to um, keep our lives valuable love ourselves enough to take care of ourselves and to have joy in our lives. So I will see you soon. Look, looking forward to the Mixing Colors video. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Always glad to have you with me. Bye for now.